It's going to be weird playing our theme music with him sitting here, Kent. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your theme music. <laughs> yes. That's uh, that's exactly how much uh, prep I've done for this show. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's about how much prep we've done, too. So <laughs> that sounds good. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 141 for Thursday, the 14th of September, 2017, and I can't find the damn screen that I need to go to because <laughs> I suck at life. How are you doing uh, tonight, Kent? I am fantastic. I missed last week and I really missed. I am glad to be back on here this week. Yeah. Oh, we're not um, a, who do we got with it? Uh, we, we got... We got the, the music you're listening to right now belongs to a certain individual that we've invited on, and now you'll be able to see him, Mr. Kevin McLeod. How are you doing tonight, Kevin? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for the invite. <laughs> remember, remember what I was saying about the, the, the P's and Q's? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think you crossed the I's and dotted the T's. I, 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 don't, I don't know. It's, it's definitely my fault, though, whatever happened. Um, so, yeah, uh, Kevin McLeod... Uh, Internet famous, if nothing else, because every podcast of of any hobbiness at all has ever has has used your music for for their show in one way or another. So it's uh it's actually you're 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 another one of the, our originals, our original guest ideas that we wanted to have uh-huh. on the show from three years ago. Yeah, original um, guest idea. I made it to episode one forty one. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for the record, we did email you like two years ago. We just never got a reply, and we were too oh. too ashamed to write back. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. It's just ritual. So, I'll, ritual I'll land They're on just... that one. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is ritual misery, not ritual success. Um... <laughs> <laughs> too accurate. Too accurate. Uh, oh. Kent, how's your how's your week been, man? Oh, God. exhausting, man. Um, yeah, so the reason that I wasn't here last week, I was doing some traveling, and uh, not for vacation. I had uh, stuff. I had stuff that I had to take care of, mm. and uh, that took up pretty much my entire week last week. Uh, spilled into both weekends, uh, before it and after it. Uh, got back Sunday night and went to work Monday morning, and it's pretty much been nonstop. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's Thursday night. Thursday night, it's RMP time, and this is the best time of the week. So, uh, yeah, hopefully your week hasn't been as crazy as mine. Um, we tore down some more trees. I hurt my back again, and conveniently, um, I hurt my back right after I found out that they are going to MEB me. Well, they're looking into MEB me. The, the initial phase of evaluation, MEB for those non-military types, is Medical Evaluation Board. Essentially, they're they're raising the question on whether or not my medical conditions, uh, namely my back and my knee are stopping me from performing my full duties as a military member. And thus, uh, should I be forcibly removed from my service, uh, retired early, essentially at this point is what it comes out to. Hmm. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm wondering how that will, f- because you're, you're retirement eligible now based on your time in service. Yes. Yes, and, and and that's actually part of the problem is because I'm over 20 years. There's, if if the military gives me disability, if if the Air Force gives me disability, it plays with my veteran's disability, which plays with my actual pension. So it it like it's it, there's so many layers there, and they're all tangled up. There's, it, it, and nobody knows the answer that because nobody's you know the people that know the answer are the people that are judging you whether or not you can stay in. So it's, it, there's like right. no advice to be given and it's just, well, I guess I'll just ride this out and see what happens. Hmm. Yeah. But, I well, mean, but uh, uh, on the flip side, I got firewood for the spring because <laughs> it's too cold <laughs> in the winter to put a fire outside, but we got firewood for the spring. <laughs> Kevin, wow. Kevin, how's your week been? My week has been gloriously slow. I'm really excited about it. Uh, it's the first week in like, I don't know, a year where I didn't release any tracks. Mm. Crazy. Oh, wow. Now we're going to get to, uh, kind of get to your process a little later, but I didn't realize you were putting out tracks every single week. Cause I, I usually check your site out, uh, in competech.com about yeah. probably every month or two yeah. and see what's going on. And there's always new stuff. There's always old stuff that I just haven't found. 
but I didn't realize you were actually putting them out that fast. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had been for, I don't know, last 10 years or so. It's insane to me. That is yeah. just crazy. <laughs> um, so I'm taking a bit of a break right now. You caught me in a break moment. Oh, that, that works perfectly for this podcast. Taking yeah. the week off. Yeah. <laughs> now, are you actually taking the week off or is it like you had other things going on that precluded you from putting something out this week? Oh, no, I have nothing going on. <laughs> I totally could have worked, but I mean, so what do you that, people, that, what do you people want from me? Honestly, <laughs> I can't take a break ever. Is that what you want? Cause I, I can't keep that up. Look, there's another hundred thousand podcasts out there need music right now. (laughs) (laughs) As if thousands of podcasters suddenly cried out in horror. (laughs) Hey, and, and, uh, and a good thousand of those would actually give you credit. So, um, (laughs) out of, out of 10,000. Yeah. You are optimistic. (laughs) (laughs) That's unfortunate. (laughs) Oh, geez. Oh man! Uh, apparently, Kent just brought it to my mind that we, uh, we we're having a little glitch on the Diamond Club TV side, so I'm going to go try to fix that real quick. We might uh, break and then come back, but either way, okay. Um, now I'm going to leave it to Kent to tell a funny story while I browse the internet ah. and fix my shit. Well, I was I was just going to talk about the uh, geeky thing that I did this week. So, have you guys seen this new show, this Seth MacFarlane show, The Orville? No, I have. It's, yes, it's on TV. So no. Well, what What did you think, Kevin? Did you Did you enjoy it? Um, I think it has potential. I think the um, like, because I'm comparing it mostly to uh, Galaxy Quest. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you know that had a lot of heart right off the bat. I mean, the uh, the captain and first officer, they have a great relationship. I enjoy that. Mm-hmm. They um. Yeah, no, I think I think it'll it'll be a worthwhile watching. I'm not going to call it a top tier, right? Right. Uh, television experience, but yeah, no, it's just fun. Yeah, well, absolutely. It's, it's it's Seth MacFarlane though, right? Yes. So yes. it's it's not top tier. It, it's Seth MacFarlane, <laughs> but what he does is he takes that middle tier and goes to the very top of that middle tier. So. Right. Yeah. See, I went into it like really optimistic. I wanted to like this show, and. I went in there with that optimism, but also a little bit of worry because I was afraid it was going to be too screwball, like mm. just really off the mm. wall, you know, kind, yeah. you know, kind of like a guy or something. And uh, it turns out it's actually a sci-fi show that's a comedy, with the exception like, of the security officer. I think that's uh, right. <laughs> that one, she is a little screwball. Well, yeah, I mean, there it has its moments. It, it's got some some really like goofy moments. Um, but it's fine. Like it's, there is some smart humor in there and it, it focuses, I think a little bit more on the sci-fi like adventure elements than even the comedy. And I I think it was a good mix and I, I I really enjoyed it. I I'm looking forward to next Sunday actually for episode two. Good deal. Good deal. Um, what'd you get into geeky Amos? Uh, I I, I bought a new camera. Okay. You know how I've been complaining about my old camera for the last decade that I've owned it? So <laughs> I finally replaced it. And I actually meant to mention this last week, I think. When I when I go into product search mode, I spend a lot of time doing product reviews, watching YouTube videos. I'll even get into the unboxings and I'll compare unboxings between people because, well, Apple has taught me over the years to appreciate the packaging that something comes in. Um <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I was torn. I, I've I ne- finally narrowed it down between a, an ADD, a Canon ADD, or a Canon 5D Mark III or IV. Uh, the four is con- considerably more expensive. Um, but uh, that's essentially what it came down to: is the the four is the three. I, I couldn't get the three because my 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 ritual misery wouldn't let me get the previous model i'd have to get the most recent model uh mm-hmm. but the most recent model is four thousand dollars so i cut that into thirds and went with the uh with the add and i'm loving it so far man i've taken uh, several hundred pictures already and it's it's great it's great so when you're saying add you're saying eight zero delta yes 
when I would swear, like it totally sounds like you're saying like attention deficit disorder. I, and I was like, that is the perfect camera for you. <laughs> other than being, uh, other than having a crop sensor and not doing 4K, this camera has all the bells and whistles that you could need. So if you do have ADD, you could actually go through <laughs> your ADD and express your ADD through your ADD with all the options. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's really pretty ridiculous. Right on, right on. <laughs> what kind of geekiness did you get up to in this non-working week of yours, Kevin? Uh, actually, a couple of things. I've been, uh, I've, been, I, I've been playing with the idea of making a video game. Uh, more of a more of an experience in a video game. So I've been working with Flow IO, uh, Flow Lab. Been working with uh, Roblox. These are frameworks that do that where you can create video games. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, it's a very uh, non-engaging video game where you just wander around and it sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leave it to Kevin to make it sound good. That's so cool. <laughs> it, exactly. It, 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 damn, it better. <laughs> if my game doesn't sound good, I. Fail. Yeah, <laughs> as, just a, give up. as a human, just as a human, you, you had one job, <laughs> literally exactly. one job. Exactly. <laughs> no, that's really cool. That's that's awesome. But is this something so, that you're looking yeah. just as a as a hobby, or something that you're gonna put out there to maybe make some money on? I d I doubt I'll make money on a a game where you just sit around and listen to fun things. Um, but it's it's interesting to me, and you know, I've just been spending days looking up things on wikis and reading the APIs for these things. So nice. one of these days I might have a video game out, you know, that, awesome. that I did. Have you, have you ever uh, contributed to a video game? Oh yeah. All the time. I'm yeah. in a, I'm in a bunch. I had like four of the PlayStation VR lunch titles. I did the music for. Oh, well, sure. um, yeah. Right. It's like a thing. <laughs> 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 Almost as if the uh, it's like a, it's like a thing that I kind of do professionally. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it, it's amazing. Like like I was saying during the pre-show, I, I just went to your IMDb page just uh, yesterday or the day before, and I knew that you had some some credits out there. But oh my gosh, sir! Like you've got thousands, literally thousands, literally of thousands. Yeah, from That's... video games. Um, uh, all kinds of things, and it it doesn't even talk about like podcasts like ours, uh, no. YouTube channels, things like that. These are just like professional, uh, yeah, just uh, movie things. I, you know, yeah. Oh God, if you want to get into YouTube videos, it's I mean, it's in the millions, tens of millions. <laughs> yeah, I have no <laughs> hundreds of millions. It might be hundreds of millions. I don't know. It's like, hard for like me to half, go a day avoiding me. Half of YouTube. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, it's it's amazing to me, like, because I'll just every now and then just watch random YouTube videos, and I'm like, where where do I know that music? Oh yeah, that's I heard that on Incompetech.com. Like, holy yeah. cow, you're you are absolutely everywhere. Um, uh, yeah, pretty cool. So since we're getting into that, and I, I just want to say, like, you the, you're everywhere, podcasts, YouTube videos, stinking real movies and stuff like video games, like. <laughs> There's always there's always somewhere TV to find shows, you. Yeah, but but how? Uh, like I don't know hardly anything about you though. Oh, I have crafted my persona perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're <master>. welcome. <laughs> so, how long have you been doing uh doing like just music? I mean, what 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 got you into music? Uh, God knows what got me into music. Um, that. That's lost to time. That goes back, you know, decades and decades. Um, doing like this stuff professionally, exclusively. I think I'm going on like 12 years now, hmm. um, which is uh, that's a long time to do anything. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're you're not kidding there. Uh, I've been yeah been in the Air Force for 22 years. I can tell you all about doing something too long. Oh God, I can't. <clears throat> Kevin, I hope I'm you had more than one job. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I've been stationed okay. a lot of places. Uh, I'm going to go I'm, ahead and show on, on the screen the, Kevin's IMDb page. Um, yeah, and this is just the, like, in-production things. This isn't yeah. even, like, his catalog yet. 2,691 credits as a composer. Yep. 
Yeah, to be fair, a lot of those people just use the music that's available on my website in their films, like a good chunk of them. Mm -hmm. I went and I signed up for IMDb Pro so I could get like all the information from all the people. And then I started contacting people like, hey, I see you're using my music. Um, you need some music for your show coming up? <laughs> and without question, everyone's like, no, we got it. Thanks. I was like, okay. All right. <laughs> then I'm not, won't write music for your new show then, but I offered just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my God. No, why Wait, did, what, why did you go the, uh, the creative commons route? I think copyright is fundamentally just broken. Just horribly, horribly broken. And I don't have the kind of money that it takes to buy lobbyists to go up against, you know, Sony and BMG and Warner and whoever else owns all this music stuff. Mm. But I don't have to play by those rules. I can go off on my own and just not not play in that uh, in that playground and uh, give away my music as long as I like. Turns out you can do that. <laughs> weird huh weird it is weird it's mildly expensive so, um so I've, I've watched you create music before on your twitch channel and it's fascinating yeah. it is absolutely fascinating to me because it seems effortless and i'm sure it's not i'm sure you put a lot of effort into it but from me being like a non-musically talented person i mean yeah. i've dabbled a little bit, but I don't have like that. He like, played natural. trumpet in high school. Oh, sure, sure. You know, and I've <laughs> messed around with the bass guitar and things like that. But right. like, have that like natural talent, and to watch someone like you just, you know, carry on a conversation with your audience while you're just like putting together a masterpiece, like seemingly nonchalant. Uh, like how? Like what is your process? Like how? How did you get to? Um, I guess that skill level, or is that is it raw talent, or like what? Like, how did you, how do you do it? I guess. <laughs> that, well, that, that is almost that. I mean, that's got to be skill level because I think it's the easiest thing in the world to do. Hmm. Um, but that's just because I've done it for, I don't know, a decade. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and you know, even if you're like a welder and it's like, I'm sure after 10 years you can like weld and talk to someone. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's just doing it. I don't, there's no... I, I mean, I wasn't born knowing how to work software. I wasn't born knowing how to write music. You just right. do it and do it and do it, and eventually... Magic! It looks like magic. Eventually, it looks like magic. Oh, how about that? <laughs> so, did you start out... like When you were a young child, did you, did you learn an instrument as a child? or? Oh, yeah, you... yeah. No, we had a piano in the house. There were a few instruments around. You know, I, I learned how to play clarinet, trumpet, um, reasonably well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I play anything particularly well, um, but I know how they all work, so mm -hmm. I can write things that sound good. Yeah, 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 definitely. And I, so you kind of hinted at it, just uh, the skill that you display when you're creating the music really is is more about learning software and knowing what button to push to make it make that sound basically well a lot yeah a lot of it's that a lot i mean you also have to learn i mean there's orchestration involved and there's theory involved and there's all sorts of things that sort of confluence into making a piece of music mm -hmm. yeah the uh oh boy i don't know how this is just you know, the, the history of your life up until that point. And there you go. Yeah. When, when you That's, sit down to, to make a, a, a new tune is like, do you typically have something in your mind or is it just, uh, you just kind of play with the buttons until something comes in and then you just go. Oh forward? no, there, there's almost always a goal. Yeah, a, um, like a, a tempo, a mood or, uh, uh yeah. Like, let's say I want to do some, um, like morning jazz kind of music or or if I'm doing a thing for an animation or a video game. I mean, there's there's always constraints. Um, if I try to write music without constraints, I get the same piece of music, like in 55 variations. It's, it's not okay. 
<laughs> so I, de- I definitely want to want a, I want a project to work on. Hmm. Got it. Yeah. Something that I've noticed too, is you are genre agnostic. <laughs> you, are not, you are not restrained in any way. I've seen you do, uh, you know, you mentioned jazz, um, metal, uh, mm-hmm. just, you know, absolutely anything. The, the gamut, is there any particular genre that you don't do like that you just avoid? Uh, I avoid, uh, Indian music that scares me (laughs) so hard. I mean, they have such a, a rich rhythmic tradition and like, it's just built so differently from Western music. Mm. I can't, I can't, I can do things that sound like Indian music to people who are like from the U S but I can't, I can't do Indian music. (laughs) Indian music for non Indians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can do things that people think, oh, that sounds like Bollywood. But it, you, when you talk to the Bollywood people, they're like, what, what is this? This is not, <laughs> like, this, not even really o- this is not even okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, when, you, when you're making music, how often do you end up with a product that you, that you like versus one that you're just like, oh, this is, this is, this didn't work out? Uh, yeah, we have to, we have to define that threshold of like, like, I'm really proud of like, I don't know, four pieces of music out of like 4,000. Um, but I like everything that I release. Otherwise I wouldn't release it. Mm. I mean, yeah, I there are hundreds and hundreds of pieces here that are not released because they're not okay. They're not good or they're not good yet. Which is the other possibility, <laughs> right, right? Now, so how often do you release a piece of music and think that this is truly complete? This piece will not get any better. Is that like you don't release it until you get it to that oh, point? Oh, never, never. I never get. I, I've. That's that just doesn't happen. There's no <laughs> such thing as perfect. Right, right. You, you, perfect. you, you, you roll it up to like you know if I can get it over ninety percent good. All right, that's releasable. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> what's going on? Is that is that is that what what is that funny? Well, no. I'm I'm actually I'm I'm sitting there reading the uh, reading the chat room and Poodle Punch is in there going that is not even okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just pulling random quotes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, um, Kevin, I was just I was thinking so. Um, you know, you've, you put out such a volume of music and we've already looked at your IMDB page and know that a, a lot of people enjoy what you put out. Uh, what would you say is your actual influence though on music? Like as far as maybe other musicians or maybe other, uh, like, you know, artists like, um, uh, you know, filmmakers, people like that. Like, do people think about Kevin McLeod as someone who like influenced them? I, I don't know if that's for me to say. Um, I hope a lot of my influence is in my distribution method. And obviously it, it works. Um, you, can, you can release things for free and you'll be okay. There's, there's enough people out there to, uh, to support you. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I've done anything particularly brown, gray, ground, brown, breaking, <laughs> ground, groundbreaking in uh, production or, um, you know, theory. I haven't. I mean, there's no major breakthroughs there. Um, I always manage to sound a little bit like me, which is nice. You know, even <laughs> even across genres. I can listen to something going, yep, yeah, that's the choice that I made. You know, I, I do sound like me. Um, I say that all the time. It's just never good. <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever listen to something that you did and you're like, did I do that? I mean, that sounds like me, but I don't remember making that. Oh, my God. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because people send me emails. It's like, hey, this person used your music in a video. I can't find one. I'm like, man, that does that does sound like me. I don't think that's me. But yeah, close. Yeah, that's and, that's and and sometimes I'll be like, yes, I totally wrote that. I have no idea what the title is. Right. <laughs> right. Sorry. 
<laughs> that's actually a little bit of a game. If you if you hear music and you want to try to find out what it is, just go to incomptech.com and try to find it using the the search filters and see if you can find that piece of music. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. I can't yeah. say that I've never played that. <laughs> does, does the search work okay for you these days? Um, I mean, it 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 filters stuff out and gives me. It, there's always something new there to listen to. So, all right. Glad glad to hear. I didn't mean to be doing market research on your podcast, but you know, <laughs> it's no, it's, that's, hey, that's it's not... good. Somebody's getting out, it's getting something out of this podcast, right? <laughs> no, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I'll go to Incompetech and just like just browse. Like I'll I've got this fantasy of making a movie someday. I it will never happen. Uh, but every now and then I'll just think you know of a, a scene, like oh I want an epic fight scene. Let's see what Kevin has made that would fit that. You know, and there's there's just any scenario that I can imagine for a movie, there's a piece out there that you did that is just per, it just perfectly sets that scene in that mood. And, wow, uh, man! Really, you've got something really special. Like you really do. Well, thanks. Uh, that that was our fanboy moment for the day. Yeah, that's all right. I'll, t- I'll take it. <laughs> for uh, this audience, you can't get any better than Kevin McLeod. I'm just saying. Right. Uh, well, I don't know if that's music for three years so <laughs> <laughs> but we we have since episode one we have properly credited him <laughs> yeah. well thank you so much you are among the elite i, I don't <laughs> i don't know that we've ever forgotten to but it's always been in our show notes yeah like, like verbally say it but it, yeah. it's always been in our, like from day one that's part of the template yep yep definitely well, from, uh, kevin do you so speaking of that so we what you require as an artist for your copyright is that anyone that wants to use your music, you, you release it as Creative Commons. Is it three? I think it's three, right? Um, yeah. Well, things are getting a little fuzzy. Uh, Creative Commons by attribution, mm-hmm. certainly. Right. Right, uh, right yeah. now, my uh, it's it's a mix between three and four. So. Okay. I'm got mo- it. I'm moving to four because four is a lot more readable. And it's a lot more internationally uh, happy, compliant. It's essentially, yeah, it, you go to the page, you click on the little thing where you want to go, and it says, hey, put this at the bottom of your thing, and you copy that, and you put that in your thing, and then you're done. Like, I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I think it's really easy. However, you would be amazed at my emails. <laughs> it, I, yeah, I, I bet. Apparently, you know, BioCal likes the way I say thing, so I'm just going to keep saying thing until the thing shows up and says thing. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kevin, I didn't even know what Creative Commons was until we started using your music. Oh, and, really? And, until I explained yeah. it to him. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Well, I, that's well, that's great. I'm glad to be got, an ambassador for Creative Commons. Yeah, you've actually got a page, I believe, if it's still there, um, on incompetech.com that that basically breaks it down. Uh, about the sh- the shortfalls of copyright and what Creative Commons does uh, for artists and consumers of art. Right. Uh, yeah. It was actually yeah that was incredibly informative and um, I encourage any any other creators out there, uh, fellow podcasters, musicians, uh, you know, get out there and like really learn about what Creative Commons does as a license. It's actually it's it's pretty versatile. There's a lot of different uh ways that you can do it uh the, the way that kevin does his stuff and the way the rmp puts out our, our podcast is under creative commons by attribution which basically means that you can use our stuff and you know remix it or uh, you know use it in your like new work as long as you attribute it to us and uh i think that's a it's a really cool way to do it which I mean, not to get too technical, but because we use Kevin's under the attribution, we have to allow ours to be used under attribution, and that's just good stewardship of the Creative Commons process. So, sure, uh, actually, I, uh, wait, whoa, hang on. There's a bunch of different Creative Commons licenses. One of them is share alike, mm-hmm. where if you use something, you also have to share it. You don't have to share my stuff at all. You don't have to share. Your podcast. I well, mean, I recommend it. Well, then we're just going above and beyond because we're not going <laughs> to. <I'm, Yes. I'm, laughs> I yeah. go into archive.org but, and it's already like muscle memory. I clicked all the things. And <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. 
but yeah, that's um, and it's just good. It's always a recommendation to follow the licenses that you have before you. Uh, there there are some things that you can change about it, but we're we're not. Internet, look into my eyes. Let me tell you this. The day that we take our podcast off the Creative Commons, you know the apocalypse is coming. You know it's coming for you. Watch the four horsemen. Mark your door. Do what you got to do. And if you're yep. an independent creator, go ahead and use Creative Commons. Like, why not? It still protects your rights without, uh, without actually costing you anything. Yeah it, yeah, it takes out a lot of the stupid parts of the uh, U.S. copyright law and just lets you get things to where it, they need to be. Yep. And it's been yep. challenged a few times, and, and I don't know that it's ever lost, although there has been some, there have been some, uh, a few cases where it was, it was settled out of court, you know, or, or whatever. But yeah. Uh, it's, the, uh, uh, I think the only big question mark is still in Creative Commons zero licensing. I don't know if that one's been tested in court, but I haven't checked in the last couple months. Mm. Right, and that's where you retain all your rights and and attribution and everything else, right? Uh, uh, Z, uh, Creative Commons zero is the closest thing to public domain that you can do. Mm. It's you give away zero. all your rights. That's the one that hasn't been tested that I know of. Mm. I mean, because everyone's really interested in about international uh intellectual property law is that what this podcast is about ip law because <laughs> i'm no. in i mean i live that every day but i i don't know th- this uh this podcast is whatever your geek is whatever all right is. well international internet intellectual property law there we go <laughs> uh, we, we have a lot of fellow podcasters watch our show, and so this is actually a topic that would interest uh several of our listeners and it's actually something we 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 uh, well, I don't know about Kent, but I talk about it on a regular basis with other podcasters, and especially with my other my other show, Undaunted. Uh, we talk about that during pre and post show quite a bit, but none of us are ever experts, so we never bring it up during the show. But it's always something like every podcaster I've talked to thinks about Creative Commons and how to properly use it and how to properly protect yourself and and you know how to how to properly at, attribute other people, which is why I'm so glad you have a little applet on your page where you just copy and paste the actual text and put it in there and call it a day. Yeah, it seems like it's really easy. <laughs> you'd yeah, think that would be easy. like a thing that people could do you'd think that but. Half, half your emails right <laughs> it's a good chunk it's a good chunk all right um it's a it's about time we we checked out one of these right um where's the button here it is reggie watts Beats Defy Boxes. This was one that I actually picked. Um, so I'm interested to get your takes on it, Kent and Kevin. Yeah. So Reggie Watts, I within like 30 seconds of of this talk beginning. Well, okay, let, let, let me rephrase it. Because in the first 30 seconds, he was speaking French. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? Uh <laughs> So, but within the first 60 seconds of this, I was like, wow, I think this guy might be a genius. He's either crazy or a genius or maybe a little bit of both. And then by the end of the roughly 10 minute TED talk, I knew for sure that he was a genius. Uh, This guy, he's a musician, he's a comedian, he's a philosopher, he's a thinker. Like this guy is just, ridiculously talented and i was in awe for for 10 minutes it, once that's, you cut on yes it that's really about the best way that i can describe it uh kevin would you agree or or where are you landing on this yeah this is um for the audio listeners fa- kevin actually wheeled himself away <laughs> and then real wheeled himself back to the <laughs> microphone uh <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, discussion of this, I mean, yeah, yeah, dude's good. Um, Yeah, he's a great thinker. Um, Did he package them uh, both appropriately? It was entertaining. He's very entertaining. Um, If he'd just given a talk like a philosopher, like a Daniel Dennett or something like that, would he be 
more energy. I don't know. I don't know. I, he's doing a great thing. <laughs> I, uh, is it a thumb I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said you? that I watched this video and that I was familiar with it because <laughs> I, I'd seen it a while ago. I'm like, I, so yeah, I saw it. I mean, I just watched it. I just, I don't know. If I have smart things to say about critical analysis of other people's stuff, creative stuff. Um, I'm, ah, thing, sorry. One, uh, I have one more comment. So one one thing that I thought is like, especially when he was appearing to be philosophical, um, yeah. I, I took it as a parody. He was like basically putting on a uh, uh, absolutely. Um, so like a parody of a TED talk, basically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was using big words that didn't necessarily go together in sentences, and yep, um, it was yeah. It needed it, was, it needed to be. It, I mean, it needed to be parodied too because some of those TED talks are a little uh, pseudo deep, <laughs> pseudo deep. <laughs> okay, so so this the reason I picked this. I was I was browsing around, just kind of flipping through. And I ran across this one. In the last couple of weeks, we've had, you know, why TED Talks suck and, and why I don't watch TED Talks and this and that. And this kind of fit in that because it is a parody of a TED Talk. There's definite talent there. But just the fact that not only does he start out in French, and I think it's actually like a French-Spanish amalgamation, like there's, there's a little bit of kick around. And then he cuts into English, like, and... and <laughs> And oddly enough, the uh, the little uh, the the little transcript on the bottom of the screen starts in English at the English part, not during the French part. Like they just gave up on that entirely. Um, yeah, it just said foreign language. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were supposed to be confused by that. You were supposed to be yeah. confused. And, and, and of all the things he says, he contradicts himself more often than he actually makes a statement. And yeah. I think that's the beauty of it is that he goes through and it, it sounds amazingly smart until you really. Like the the second time I watched it, I was like, "This guy's full of shit. He's completely <laughs> full of shit." But it's done so intentionally, and then he cuts over to this like this little beatboxing, which actually he's he's pretty talented on on doing the doing the sounds and stuff. Like I was I was you know really happy about that. But then even the yeah. even the words and the music of his beatbox, like they don't. If if you're a deaf person and you're feeling the bass from this talk, you're gonna think is the most amazing talk ever. <laughs> but being able to to hear the enunciation and the voice and how he wraps his words around it and everything else, you know it's it's complete crap, but it's done so skillfully. I thought it was great. Well, and the and the thing was, I read a little bit about him after I watched this talk, and every show that he gives, every time he is on stage, it's completely improv, mm. completely improv every time. That every show is completely unique, Jeez. and that that alone fascinates me. All right, well, it gets two thumbs up from me. Even though it's full of shit, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and maybe because it's full of shit, I don't. Know. Right, yeah. So everybody, everybody, check this one out. You will definitely be entertained, regardless of how you feel uh, about him and his talent. You will definitely be entertained. It's yeah. Reggie Watts beats defy boxes, and and it's in the short one. It's it's not even an overly long one. It's it's really yeah. Great. So it's less. It's just yeah. under ten minutes, I think. So yeah. Right All on. right. Um. So I'm gonna take it from that bullshit to some other bullshit. Uh. This is the last official Ritual Misery podcast to be streamed on DiamondClub.tv in the Sergeant Muffin era. The Sergeant Muffin era of DiamondClub.tv of this grand architect who built some really confusing stuff and made all wonderful things happen on DiamondClub.tv is stepping away Wednesday, I believe is his last day. I'm still taking the day off to do a long stream. I invite everyone who's ever streamed on diamondclub.tv to come on and, and share that moment and give Sergeant Muffin some thanks for the last three plus years that he's, you know, put his own money, time and effort and uh, electricity bill into mm -hmm. what we've enjoyed as our playground. We're all switching over to Twitch or YouTube, but it's all going to be recombined because of the genius of T2T2. Um, uh, uh, W Scott is one and uh, shit. I'm probably forgetting like half a dozen uh, names. Dark Redeemer, Joe Mon, um, so yep. many people. Uh, I, I I should probably just have the damn the, the right. slack up and just look at the it, names. Let's just say it's a group. Effort. It is a Diamond um, Club the project. The CDN servers are shutting down on Saturday. The actual uh RTMP server will be shutting down on Wednesday, as far as I know, unless it's changed. 
And uh, I'm going to probably lead that. I don't even know what the time it is, but I'm going to lead a, 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 a muffin stream right up until... Um, uh, right up until VOD Squad, and if VOD Squad is still live for for Diamond Club, then I'll go right into that. And if not, then uh, you know there'll be the the first show non Diamond Club TV Sergeant Muffin era. It's gonna be run <clears throat> by I think W Scott is one and BioCal and uh, and T two T two are taking the reins, the major reins on it, with, with, along with Dark Redeemer. And I I just gotta say, man, I know if you're if you're not part of Diamond Club and you're listening to this, first of all, what's wrong with you? Second of <laughs> all. It's it's rare that you have a group of people in such different places. I mean, Dark Redeemer's down south, BioCal's out west. I'm not even sure exactly where uh <clears throat> well Jotmon's like in the Midwest and and W Scott is one, I think I think he lives on the moon, but T two T two's in <laughs> Estonia. And all these different people have come together to make Diamond Club what it is. And this is this is the the changing of the guard as far as Diamond Club T V and um Man, I, I, I think it's I think it's really awesome that people have come together. Uh, I'm happy to do our part. Uh, and Diamond Club has really made this podcast what it is. I mean, we we really changed the podcast and and, and grew our audience, and uh, it's been awesome. So one last time, officially, uh, hail Muffin, and thanks for all that you've done for us, Dan. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. Um, Sergeant Muffin, yeah, he already knows that I think he's the mm. greatest person ever. And and uh, Wabbit Magic, don't forget Wabbit Magic. He's uh, he's another kicker in there, right? Yep, yep. So so many people involved. Um, yeah, yeah. I can't thank Sergeant Muffin enough. He is the man. So um, okay, so enough of that business. Um, your girlfriend and uh, and 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 drinking partner of mine, because you bail out on us early. Sasien uh, was a guest on the latest episode of another fun podcast. Have a drink. Yes. So this past week's episode of the Have a Drink show, um, I was actually in talks to be the guest on their show. But because of the travel and all the crap that I was doing over the last week or so, uh, I was not able to be the guest. And they were like, well, how about Sassy N? Well, let's ask her. And sure as heck, she was the guest and she had a blast. Uh, they sampled the uh, whatever the current. Um, uh, Samuel Adams sampler pack or the uh, seasonal pack. And they they w- went for about an hour, hour and a half, I think. Uh, really fun show. Um, if you guys are not watching Have a Drink uh, and you like beer, or even if you don't like beer, um, Chris and Brittany and the, and the gang are really cool people. And then add Sassy into the mix, and it was just a, a whole hell of a lot of fun. So um, there's going to be a link in the show notes, and um, I'll go ahead and uh, and throw it out to the chat as well. Uh, but I'll, I'll link to their YouTube channel. Um, I highly encourage everyone to check that out. Um, Kevin, I'm going to assume that you've had a drink or two. Why, why would we assume this? I'm, I'm, ev- I'm not <laughs> even clear. I'm not even clear. <laughs> so, uh, so here's to have a drink. Um, we are recording this quite late for me. So uh, <laughs> this is not, it's not like, you know, a 6 a.m. recording, you're, just so you're, you know. You're in Eastie, right? You're on the East Coast somewhere? Uh, I'm in this. I'm in central right now. So. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, have a drink show. I gotta say, man, I, I, they're they're awesome people, and uh, and I took them some beers for Nerdtacular, and we all had a good time. Man, good people, good people. Uh, yep. they they should uh they should uh they should invite Kevin on and and have a uh, have a drink with Kevin. That's the that's what I yeah. think could happen. No doubt. Um. Also, if you guys um, if you guys haven't had enough of Sassian after watching that, uh, you can catch her this Saturday. Um, this Saturday is the Diamond Club movie party, the monthly um, time where Poodle Puncher and Sassian and several members of Chat Realm get together for a Diamond Club party where they watch crappy movies. Uh, this month, they're going to be watching Manborg and Death Race 2000. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. It is going to be a blast. I, I'm, Kevin, have you seen Manborg or Death Race 2000? No, I was I was gonna stop. I was gonna you know step in here and go. It's like, well, maybe they're not terrible movies. No, maybe they are. <laughs> maybe they're really, really terrible. I've never even heard of that. Wow, that sounds. Death Race Two Thousand <clears throat> is um, I, definitely the most popular of the two. I'd say at least half of Chat Realm has at least heard of Death Race Two Thousand. Hmm. 
It's a All really right. yeah. You, I'm it? sure you're familiar with the concept. This is the movie where uh, th- there's this like race in the future because this is an older movie. Two th- so the year 2000 was like distant future. Oh, there's yeah. a race in the future where you would get points for like running people over. And so, like you, you know, you hit the old lady that's pushing a, a grocery cart across the street. Or something. <laughs> oh, hundred points for you know that guy. Uh, he, I, he did, I he guess just... I am. I I am familiar with <laughs> yeah. this film. So, yeah. So that's he just that's clicked in his head. <laughs> yeah. Now the other one I was unfamiliar with, <clears throat> Manborg. I had never heard of this, so I went to IMDb, and I played the trailer for it. And holy crap, this movie looks so terrible that i'm sure it's going to be uh, just a work of art and they're going to have such a good time with their commentary uh over the top of it it's it's going to be fantastic i oh, cannot wow. wait that's going to be this saturday <laughs> 9 p.m central on dc tv oh man well, um this irc the movies themselves will not be streaming over dc tv uh but they will they will provide you instructions on how to yeah yeah, yeah. We're, not, we're not violating copyright when we do it it's it's exactly. it's all legit it's just janky as hell but it's it's legit <laughs> yes. it's, 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 it's legit. like <laughs> it, it takes like six <laughs> steps but it's legit it's weird uh, it, it's it's not comfortable but it, it's legal uh, which is i mean more than i can say for them our first couple girlfriends um <laughs> I mean, technically, I wasn't either, except for that one period yeah. of time where I was, I was like legal, but my girlfriend wasn't for three days. It was awkward, right. just awkward. Yeah. Well, um, the, I think most states have that, like that, that law built in where you know, as long as you're within a certain range, then it's still okay. It, yeah, it's blurry, it, and, and it would have been fine. <clears throat> but in Indiana, the cutoff was 18. Once you turn 18, it didn't matter how how many days apart you were. And my girlfriend at the time was three days younger than me. So for three days, <laughs> just, as long as you abstain for those three days, you're... <laughs> which it was like a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, nothing was happening anyway. Um, <laughs> there's uh... a <laughs> oh. uh, Kent, is it your week or is it my week? I, I don't even know anymore. I thought we had a schedule, but it's whatever. Um, I'm going to go yeah. ahead and introduce it, I guess. Yeah, that sounds good. We, uh, K- Kevin, I, 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 I uh... I'm 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 almost ashamed every time we say this, but we went digging through, and I said earlier in the show that we didn't know much about you, but in all actuality, we go through and we we have some of the best uh, trash divers in the world. So what we did is we we sent them out your way, um, and uh, they 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 found some of the stuff that you had done like a long time ago, and we we went through it, we kind of we kind of parsed it out a little bit, and we found. We found a, a a little bit of a, a almost a diary uh, of yours, and we went ahead and uh, we we trimmed it down. We we got one like nice nice little story out of it, and we put it together. And we're gonna go ahead and Kent's gonna go ahead and read it for you today. And I'd like to know just how. I mean, how how does this affect you emotionally going back to these old memories? I well, first off, I have no idea what you're talking about, and I'm scared. <laughs> So yeah, I, uh, I think we found your diary in the dumpster. I think is is what. All right. Anyways, let, let me go let's ahead. Let's give it a shot. It. Let's give it a shot. Right. I'll read the excerpt and uh, we'll get your reaction. All right. So the, all right, here's Kevin's diary. Every Wednesday when I get home from school, I have a piano lesson. My teacher is a very strict commentary. Her name is Sassy Inn. Our piano is a Steinway concert race, and it has 88 moves. It also has a soft pedal and a perfect pedal. When I have a lesson, I sit down on the piano scenario and play for one week. I do scales to exercise my emails, and then I usually play a minuet by Johann Sebastian McLeod. Teacher says I'm a natural genius and have a good musical brain. Perhaps when I get better, I will become a concert musician and give a recital, a recital at the Carnegie Skyscraper. Does that take you back, Kevin? I don't recall any teacher ever saying anything nice about me ever. So I'm I, I, okay. In in all fairness, there might have been some stains or something. They had to yeah, fill in some random words. I'm just yeah, a little bit rot here and there. I get I get how these things happen. <laughs> so you uh you showed us your 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 piano during uh while 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 Kit was reading that out. Oh yeah yeah you had mentioned the big Steinway yeah yeah see it's I mean you know look that just proves that. The, the stories we find 
are fact. That's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> possibly le- possibly legitimate. I believe <laughs> you can <laughs> legally say that it's at least Creative Commons. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> Um, oh. Well, th- th- this comes to the time where uh, I'm, w- I'm going to bring this on screen real quick. And uh, if you have enjoyed our time with Kevin tonight and you'd like to g- to keep his efforts alive and keep him energized and, and keep him making great music so you can steal it for your podcast, uh, cruise on over to patreon.com slash K McLeod. That's K-M-A-C-L-E-O-D. And uh, you can find uh, all kinds of good stuff there. You can you can do little uh, some donations, uh, some monthly donations right there to keep him uh, give him more weeks where he doesn't have to put out music out there for for people to steal. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, also, as we see, uh, everyone, that is my life, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I'm having a great time on your podcast. <laughs> But as we do every single week, I encourage people to go to incompetech.com yep. and check out the great things that that Kevin much appreciated. You, you know, it's it's funny we because again I said this in the in the pre show. It's weird having Kevin on because we we mention your name literally every show. I don't know that I've ever recorded a podcast of my own and not said your name at the end of the podcast. So to have you on the show is a little like it's kind of strange, but. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're actually pimping your stuff because you're here and you're enjoying our, your time with us because that's what yeah. you said. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we're holding you to it. <laughs> and, and and now that we're about ready to do our, our show rundown, we're going to say your name again. Like I've been All right. like, trying to m- mesh this through my mind. Like how do I just say, uh, uh, talk to this guy? I mean, I, it's it's just, <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Uh, Kevin, what do you got to say to our, our audience of about half your patronage? Uh, uh, well, uh, my God, thank you. Um, I couldn't do what I do if people didn't like what I do and apparently people like what I do. So that's great. So that's the number one thing I want to think. I, I mean, it sounds like I'm on a stupid award ceremony, (laughs) but it's real. The thanks is real. And I really appreciate everyone who uses my music. I don't care if you like it. I just care if you use it. <laughs> it's a bonus if you actually what, like what, uh, it. What's if you your, like it, that's great. What's your end goal with your music? Like, if you had, like, what's your what's your dream when it comes to doing music? Is it is it to have a big blockbuster? Is it to become the the digital John Williams? I mean, uh, no. I mean, I'm I'm sadly there. <laughs> I, I think I've won. Yeah, uh, and I'm and I'm not entirely sure what to do with myself. Um, the, every time I, I get like a bigger project in, I end up hating myself by the end of it. So I'm not looking for the blockbuster. I guarantee you those are the people who make those are better people than I am because my God, they're, it's a lot. It's, it's too much work. Okay. Jesus. Does that uh, help? Uh, that doesn't help at all. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you said I could swear, right? Yeah, That's yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you, well, God. you you actually promised us beforehand that you would swear, and you really haven't this entire time. Like, <laughs> right? yeah, damn it, I'll Kevin. work. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. <laughs> but honestly, yeah, the my my end game is really to get more people. Um, I would love to get more people involved in Creative Commons, both creators and you know consumers. Uh, because we can't take down, we can't take down copyright law. It's, it's, it's just too, it's just too far away. And, but we don't have to play by those rules. We can, we can go and we can share our stuff and we can create a faster, better, leaner media ensemble. Is that a word? That's okay. doesn't matter. I think so. Um, sounds good. Looks good on paper, but yeah. Yeah, we just need to, you know, like um, the G. Are you familiar with the GPL, the GNU Public License mm-hmm. for software? I mean, that's made some amazing software uh, because yep. everyone's building on the assets of the GPU, and I think that we can build on the assets in Creative Commons 
and make a better world entertainmently. Entertainmently. Yes, that's now, the word I meant to say. Now, now you've run out of words. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Entertainmently is... Uh, that's a good one. I like that. Um, real quick before we wrap this thing up, I, I, I forgot to mention this. I have fallen in love with the YouTube channel. It's, okay. it's amazing. It's informative. It's fact-based. It's got some history. It's got some media. It's called Filmmaker IQ. And if you are into the behind the scenes on how movies are made or how, why a director shoots a certain way or where title scenes came from or, you know, any of that, like there, there are literally hundreds of videos on how, how movies and TV shows are made. Um, and one of those things is definitely, you know, the, the background music and the intro music, things like that. G cruise on over to Filmmaker IQ. Uh, can't go ahead, since I'm not looking at it. Type that into the uh, show notes so I can remember to add that link. <clears throat> okay. Um, it is it's ridiculous how informative and how awesome this channel is. And I'm I'm not one to, uh, I'm I'm not one to say oh got to go check out this channel because it's so rad. This one's fucking rad. It's really good. Uh, high quality productions. As I mean, you you would you would expect it to be high quality productions. It's talking about making movies, but. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be really, really awesome. It was a really great YouTube channel, and it was just crappily made. Um, but yeah, cruise on over to Filmmaker IQ. I just discovered it like literally three days ago, and I've probably watched twenty of their videos, and they're like half an hour each. Like this has been my TV watching for the week, and it's ridiculously good. So I recommend everybody cruise on by there and see that. I have no affiliation with them at all. In fact, I've I may have reached out to try to get the uh, the, the the guy that does it to uh, <laughs> do some stuff with this. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's awesome. So I wanted to spit that out there because I, I forgot all about that. Yeah, right on. Very cool. I'm I'm on, yeah. I'm probably gonna check that out. Cool. Uh, yeah, especially with you and Lucas, and both of you have been interested in in making movies and and filming and things like that. It's it's really awesome. So yeah, oh yeah. Um, well, now is the time when we uh, ask for our five star shitty reviews again. Uh, go on to, over to iTunes, give us five stars, and tell us how bad we are. Tell us uh, everything that's awful about the show because the words don't matter. It's all about the stars, and really the ratings that in total don't matter. But you yeah, know, we've got some. We've got a few uh, five star shitty reviews on there. We are on a future show going to read those out loud. So if you want to have yours read, be sure you get it in there in the next week or two. Hmm. Uh, uh, Tom DeGoss has got a pretty good one in there. Uh, there's we, a few others. We so if actually, you want to add to the mix, uh, get on there on our iTunes page and give us five stars and a shitty review. Um, next week, we have Nick Britton coming on the show. Uh, the week after that, I don't think we have any, but no, we do. We have a very special surprise guest for episode 143. And if you need to know, if you're trying to figure out who it is, it's 143. You should be able to, it's a surprise <laughs> and it's 143. Read between the lines on that one. Um, and coming the first week or the second week of October, Shannon Morse will actually be joining us for our third year anniversary. Shannon Morse from Hack 5 will be joining us for our third year oh. anniversary of uh, recording the first episode where we had show notes, which I guess is uh, the, the big release party. So that's going to be our, our third year. Um, and we'll probably, we'll, we'll, you know what? We'll read all of our, all of our uh, reviews on that show. We'll make it a thing to review, read yeah. our five star shitty reviews on that show. So. Uh, that, I think that is the second week of October, uh, and that's that's what we have lined up so far. I'm still trying to get uh, Molly Wood back because I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I might I might have back channeled that one. Me and Richard might have back channeled that one with Jenny Josephson on another project that those two and I are working on. Um, but uh, yeah, so <laughs> oh, that pro I didn't know that Richard was part of that project as well. That's yes, that yes. dude, Richard, okay. Jenny, and I are going to start that. We're uh, recording first episode two weeks from yesterday. Holy crap. So that's going to be awesome. Oh. Oh, we're not ready to announce that one yet, though. Yeah, I was going to say, I look forward to the announcement of that because I, th I think people are going to be pretty excited. Yeah. Very um, cool. <clears throat> just going to say, da 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 <laughs> um, Kevin, where can people find more about you other than Incomptech? Because I'm already going to cover that. So give them some other. What do you place mean to other go. than Incompetech? I mean, that's my website. That's where everything is. Go to <laughs> Incompetech.com. It's the fusion of incompetence and technology. You can't miss it. <laughs> There's got to be I mean, another another place beside besides Incompetech for people to go to. Well, yeah, I mean, you can you can find my Twitter off of there. You can find my YouTube off of there. Mm. Uh, yeah, just go to Incompetech. I wait, mean, wait, really. wait, wait. You you do YouTube as well? Yeah. 
What, 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 what on earth would a music creator do on YouTube? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm guessing we'll have to find out. Ah, the suspense. It's killing my brain. K- just K- like M- KM Music <laughs> on YouTube. Yeah, well, just like every other YouTube channel, it's got Kevin McLeod's music. <laughs> yeah, it really, it really does. And first, I <laughs> actually not always first. Sometimes people beat me to YouTube with my own music, <laughs> but I amazing. try, I try to release it on YouTube as soon as I can. <laughs> holy shit! Now that is a game we we would have to play. Um, holy crap! Can't. Where can people find you, man? I'm guessing it has something to do with beer. Oh man, yeah. So for for most of my stuff, you can just go to at rm underscore del noche on Twitter. Uh, but if you are a beer person, uh, get over there on Untapped and add me as a friend. I'm del noche. I'm del del noche there and pretty much everywhere else on the entire web except for Twitter. Um, so yeah, what what about you, Amos? Um, I'm at Ethan Kane because uh, that makes sense, and uh, you can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Um, you can also go to our subreddit, ritualmisery.reddit.com, make comments on our shows. Nobody ever does. You might be the first one if you go there right now, make a comment on the show. As soon as this one posts, it'll be there. Oh, there's that beer coming through. Um, <laughs> you can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at, at our website, ritualmisery.com. And uh, here, here's the here's the here's the point. Um, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Find more at incomptech.com. <laughs> Thank you for listening. For Kent, for me, and for you, this has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Do you remember this one? That's my music, too. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, somebody's using my music. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>